What's going on guys? My name's Theo Atrix and welcome to 25 tips and tricks for PKing in old school. This video has a whole heap of new obscure tips that I haven't shown in any videos before, as well as a few very important PK tips that I might have mentioned in the past. Also, for those that are interested in attending my 100,000 subscriber event, there's information of the date and time in the description. That's all I'm gonna say about it to save time. So let's get into the tips. Using Protect From Magic in either a PK situation or when you're trying to get away from PKers has a few hidden benefits. The main one is that it will halve the amount of time that you're teleblocked for to two and a half minutes. Also, it halves the freeze time of any of the standard spellbook binding spells. It doesn't work for Ancients, but it can be handy, especially for teleblock. I've recommended before that the God Books are great for PKing. Well, instead of paying 14k per book from Purdue when you die, you should go to Jossic and get them in bulk, completely for free. As long as your book is fully filled with pages, Jossic will give you as many free books as you want. Castle Wars offers some of the best in slot rewards for pures. The Halos provide the best in slot melee defense bonuses, as well as a three prayer bonus. The Decorative Mage and Range Top both give better bonuses than the Iron Plate Body, whilst giving no negative ranged or magic attack bonuses. If you're PKing on a Bounty Hunter world, you're now required to have an emblem in your inventory in order to get an emblem drop. So even if your opponent has a tier nine and you kill them and you don't have an emblem, the emblem completely disappears from the game. You now also get free skips on people that are unsculled and for people that don't have an emblem. While on the topic of Bounty Hunter, by speaking to the emblem trader in Edgeville, you can set it so you only get targets that are under level 10 wilderness. A lot of the time you'll see that you get targets way deep in the wildy, so this small update that came a few months ago really helps. If you have a low construction level and don't have access to pools, buy a starter house in Rimington and some teleport tablets to your house. And on the Bounty Hunter world, you can join the BH and Chill clan chat to access other people's pools. If no one has a pool open on the Bounty Hunter world, you can hop to world 330, the official house world, and restore your stats and special attack there. If you haven't unlocked Arva's device, particularly on a low prayer account, then you should speak to the range tutor in Lumbridge to toggle picking up arrows going straight into your ammo slot. That helps a lot with PK. When using the Granite Maul, I notice a lot of people don't use this. Instead of clicking on your enemy, then double clicking your special attack bar, a hidden mechanic is you can double click your special bar first and then click on your opponent. That's what's called insta mauling and you can spec from a further distance as well. The Protect From Magic Prayer doesn't decrease the accuracy of enemy magic attacks. It only decreases the damage that's dealt. You should always be using magic boosting prayers when you want magic protection because your magic defense is 70% of your magic level and 30% of your defense level. Also getting your magic level up, even if you're not using magic, will boost your magic defense dramatically. With a recent update came a safe timer of six seconds where you can attack your opponent back if they run into a safe zone. This six second timer though will only activate if you attack back. So if you get attacked and don't want to fight, you can run into the safe zone without attacking them and you won't be able to get attacked. Also, when you use a special attack now, there's about a four second timer until you can teleport. So rushing is slightly more difficult. Cleaning herbs is my favorite way to perfect your switches, since you'll only ever clean a herb if you clicked on the slot properly. At the same time, you can make quite a bit of money per hour with some herbs because people mostly dump grimy herbs. Without anti-fire, enchanted dragonstone bolts can hit up to 68 in damage, making them the most powerful PvP bolts in the game solely due to their special enchantment. To avoid this, you should always drink an extended anti-fire before going PKing or into the wilderness. Also, an antidote plus plus will stop you getting poisoned for 12 minutes, which also will really help. After a few fights, you'll sometimes hear someone getting damaged while you're at the bank. This means someone else is dealing damage to a player that you've done more damage to, and that means that you'll get the loot if they die. So if you hear that, look into your chat box in case the player does die and you can find the drop. While PKing on a PvP world, a lot of the time you'll be PKing with untradeables, whether it be a defender, a fire cape, or whatever. Well, be weary because the Edgeville lever will take you straight to 50 wilderness. And while you're still in a PvP world, you'll still lose your untradeables if you die there. So never go above 20 wilderness with untradeables that you're not willing to lose. 
If you're new to PKing, you shouldn't try PKing with switches. It's so likely that you'll get outplayed, so I recommend starting off with some melee PKing, like rune PKing. Or if you're a bit of a lower level, free to play PKing is a great way to start. Learning to one tick is very worth your time for a much better KO potential. By knowing the attack speed of your main weapon, you can wear and attack with your KO weapon in the same game tick. You just need to time it to be right before you would normally attack with your main weapon. Also, one ticking your vengeance or pairing it with a KO weapon will really increase your KO potential. Be sure to boost your hit points before entering a PK area, especially if you're one defense that can easily get one hit rushed. You can use Anglerfish or Saradoman Bruise to easily go above your regular maximum health. Combo eating and drinking is vital for PKing, both free to play and members. As a free to play player, you can combo eat eating a pizza or a pie, then using your regular food. And as a member, you can eat your regular food like a shark, then drink a potion, and then eat a karamb one. You can, of course, also just shark and drink a potion like a Saradoman brew, or you can potion karamb one as well. Instead of a karamb one, you can also use gnome foods, which you can buy pre made on the Grand Exchange. The maximum healing gnome food is the pre-made chocolate bomb, healing 15 hit points. When going in for your KO weapon, wearing something like the Armadil God Sword makes it so obvious you're about to spec. A great way to hide it if you're not one ticking is by drinking a potion right before attacking with it. This hides you putting it on and will skip straight to the special attack animation. A great tip to save money while PKing is to lower the dosage of the potions that you're using. So if you die, you don't lose a mostly full potion. To do this, you can go to the herbs guy at the Grand Exchange. I recommend doing one or two doses per potion to save the most. PKing with sounds on is super important. For example, if you're fighting someone using Dragon Bolt's Enchanted, you can hear the Dragonfire spec happening before the damage hits you. That allows you to eat early. And with sounds on, you can also hear spells like Teleblock or Barrage when you're out deep in the wilderness. For rushes or for anyone that accidentally gets sculled, the fastest way to remove your skull is by teleporting to Clan Wars and entering and exiting the White Portal. This restores your stats, health, run energy, and removes your skull. Another very creative way to remove your skull is by having a Steel Dragon in your house. By going into your dungeon and dying to the Steel Dragon, you'll lose the skull faster than going to Clan Wars. Being the first one to use your special attack or utilize your KO weapon will give you a better chance at winning the fight simply because your opponent hasn't used their best KO potential yet. You shouldn't always wait for a really good time to spec because that might not happen until the end of the fight. And this doesn't mean spec as fast as you can and then get out of there. You still have great KO potential if you know how to stack your hits well. If you're standing two squares apart from your opponent, you can switch to a melee weapon and attack instantly from that tile. With sliding, which you can see easily if you run two squares back and forth, you can attack from four squares away, and sometimes even further away when using animation delaying weapons like crossbows. If you really want to make money PKing, you need to replace better items with cheaper alternatives, like using a strength amulet instead of a glory, or using myth gloves instead of a combat bracelet. Another one is climbing boots instead of rune boots. All of those small increments will add up if you're chasing money. You also don't always need to bring a full inventory of sharks. Instead, you can bring a few sharks and karam ones for combo eating, and then bring some monkfish, which really lowers your risk. Drinking the counterparts of the super combat potion is another way to save money. Recently, the looting bag was reworked and is now only 10,000 points in the Emblem Store. It has a new feature where you can open the looting bag and then anything you pick up will go straight into it. Also, the rune pouch has now been added to the Slayer Reward Shop as well, making it far more accessible for Hardcore and Ultimate Iron Man. So that's 25 interesting tips and tricks for PKing in old school. I got quite a few questions in the last video asking where people can submit tips and you can now submit at theoatrix.net slash submit and you can put your username in there as well if you want to be mentioned in the video. Anyways, if you're new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button to keep up with my uploads. Since I posted them on Twitter, over 59 inch mouse pads have been sold. So if you want to grab one, you can find them on merch.theoatrix.net. They're $15 each with free shipping worldwide. And they have some awesome fan art designs. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.